Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Struggling to pick between Fedora and Ubuntu for your next Linux adventure in 2025. It all comes down to apps, right? Let's dive in and see which one has the ultimate software arsenal. First off, a quick intro to these two powerhouses. Ubuntu, developed by Canonical, is all about user-friendliness and stability. It's based on Debian and targets beginners, developers and everyday users who want a reliable system without too much tinkering. On the other hand, Fedora, sponsored by Red Hat, focuses on cutting-edge features and innovation. It's aimed at enthusiasts, developers and those who like staying ahead with the latest tech, often serving as a testing ground for enterprise-level stuff in Red Hat Enterprise Linux. But today's big question, in the ever-evolving Linux ecosystem of 2025, which distro truly offers more applications? We are not just talking raw numbers. We we'll look at accessibility, variety, and how easy it is to get what you need. But comparing just the default repositories is a rookie mistake in 2025. The real battleground for apps is now fought on new fronts. Let's start with Ubuntu's secret weapon, Snap Packages. Snaps are containerized apps that bundle everything they need, making them super easy to install and update across distros. Ubuntu has pushed Snaps hard, and by 2025, they've seen massive adoption. Think apps like Spotify, VS Code, and even Firefox coming as Snaps by default. Major players like Google, Nvidia, and Microsoft are on board, distributing tools like Chrome and .NET via Snaps. This gives Ubuntu a big edge for proprietary or niche software that might not be in traditional repos. Fedora, meanwhile, leans heavily into Flatpak, another universal format that distros agnostic and sandboxed for security. Flatpak is available on both, but Fedora integrates it seamlessly. It's enabled by default in GNOME software, and Flathub is the go-to hub for thousands of apps. Ubuntu supports Flatpak too, but you might need to install it manually. Both distros handle app image well. Those portable, no-install files that just run anywhere. App image is great for quick tests, like grabbing Rita or Blender without committing to a full setup. So while Ubuntu Snap ecosystem feels more polished for certain apps, Flatpak and app image level the playing field, making more apps less about the distro and more about these tools. Moving beyond the everyday desktop apps, what about the tools that power innovation and specific workflows. For developers, both distros shine, but with nonsense. Ubuntu's APT package manager draws from massive Debian repos, plus personal package archives, which is PPAs, for easy access to the latest version of Python, Node.js, VS Code, or IntelliJ. It's stable, which is gold for long-term projects. Fedora uses DNF and RPM with co-ops similar to PPAs and newer kernels out of the gate which is perfect if you need blading edge developers and environments. Allowability is solid on both for languages like Go, Rust or Java often via native packages or universals. When it comes to niche software for creatives, engineers or scientists Ubuntu has Ubuntu Studio, a flavor packed with audio tools like Order, Video Editor like Kerala, and graphics apps like GIMP, all optimized for multimedia workflows. Fedora counters with its design suite for a graphic pros. Think like Inkscape, Blender, and Scientific Lab for researchers. Building tools like R, Octave, and Astronomy software. Community contributions via PPS 
or cops fill gaps. But Ubuntu's larger user base often means more options for specialized stuff. For many, the ultimate test of a Linux distro's app reads comes down to entertainment and content creation. Gaming has exploded on Linux by 2025. Thanks to Proton and Steam. Both Fedora and Ubuntu handle Steam flawlessly, with Proton making Windows games playable. Think like Cyberpunk or Edge Ring running smooth. Ubuntu might edge out slightly for driver support and launchers like Lutris or Heroic, especially on NVIDIA hardware. But Fedora's newer kernels can boost performance on AMD setups. Gaming focused spins like Nobara, which is Fedora based, or Ubuntu Game Pack make setup a breeze. On the multimedia side, tools like DaVinci Resolve, Kdan Live for video, Order or LMMS for audio, and GIMP or Krita for graphics are available on both via repos or Flatpak or Snap. Proprietary codecs can require extra steps. Ubuntu has the restricted extras package, while Fedora uses RPM Fusion. Installation complexity is low these days, with workarounds like Pipefire or better audio handling standard on both. So after exploring all the avenues for applications in 2025, which distro emerges victorious in the app count? Ubuntu generally has a broader ecosystem thanks to its massive repos, PPS, and Snap dominance, especially for proprietary and everyday apps. But Fedora isn't far behind, with its focus on Flatpak, newer tech, and specialized pins closing the gap. Now, the truth. More apps isn't always better. It depends on your needs. If you want stability, and a huge collection for general use or multimedia, go with Ubuntu. For innovation, developer work or science, Fedora might suit you more. Ultimately, the universal formats like Snap, Flatpak and AppImage. Both distro can access pretty much anything. Try them out, most are free and easy to dual boot. What about you? Are you team Fedora or Ubuntu? Share your experiences in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell for more Linux comparisons. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace out.